Hi, I'm Alex Kalustian. I'm a full-time instructor at the Boston office of Future Media Concepts, and I'm going to show you a few uh, Mac OS X tips today. Uh, I travel a lot to our offices, conferences, and things like that, and I don't want to keep a whole stack of DVDs with me in my bag. They're heavy, they're expensive, they could get damaged or lost. So what I do is I turn all the software I need into disk images so they're more portable and they're safer to carry. And we're going to make one here. I've already inserted the installer disk for Snow Leopard OS X. Uh, I could install OS X right off of the disk, but that's going to be slow and I have to carry the disk with me. So what I'm going to do instead is so I'm going to launch Disk Utility from the Utilities menu. Disk Utility is included in every copy of OS X. And Disk Utility lets you do a whole host of things. You can erase disks, you can partition hard drives, you can restore from backups. What I'm going to be doing today it's creating a disk image. Here we are. On the left side of Disk Utility, you can see a list of all the disks that are connected to your computer. And that means external hard drives, internal hard drives, and DVDs. Here's my OS X install DVD. I'm going to give it a click. And then I'm going to click New Image in the toolbar at the top of the window. Now, it's best if you just keep it the same name as the original disk. And you can store it wherever you like, say on an external hard drive or just on your desktop until you decide what to do with it. You're given a few options here. Uh, compressed is the way I go because I want to carry a lot of these on my pocket hard drive and the smaller they are, the better. And you can also choose to encrypt with a password if this is something you want to keep protected. But it's just the installer CD, so I'll leave that off. All I have to do is click Save and it's on its way. Now, if you create an uncompressed or read-only disk image, it'll go relatively quickly. Uh, this is a 5 gig DVD, so it could take maybe 15 minutes, 20 minutes. If you make it compressed, it'll take a little longer, but if you're going to be traveling with these, it could be worth the wait. So now we're done, and we have a disk image on the desktop. And what I would do now is maybe throw it on a hard drive. This is where I store all of my disk images on the hard drive I travel with. And uh, you can see here I have some Mac OS X disk images, so I can install Snow Leopard when I need to, of course, on a machine that I have a license for. Uh, and here's another great reason to make disk images. They're much faster than running an installer off of a DVD. Final Cut Studio, for example, ships on seven dual-layer DVDs. That's something like 50 gig of footage and uh, materials, and it could take three to four hours to install the whole thing. And that's if you're sitting here swapping DVDs when it needs disk 2, disk 3, and so on. But if I make every disk into a disk image, I can mount all of them. I'll just select them all and double click. Now another nice feature of disk images is they check some or they confirm that the data is still intact before running. I know that these are good because I've used them several times. So I'll just skip the confirmation step and let them mount on my desktop. Now, since a disk image is a perfect bit-for-bit -bit clone of a disk, my Mac literally thinks there are seven DVDs in seven DVD drives. All I need to do now is find the installer DVD, run it, and I don't have to sit here and attend to it while it installs, and I don't have to swap DVDs every few minutes. And installing off of disk images could take less than a half an hour compared to three or four hours off of the DVDs. So you can see it's a lot safer and a lot more convenient to back up all your DVDs as disk images. I was Alex Kalustian. We learn tips like this and more in the Apple authorized troubleshooting classes that we offer in all of our FMC offices.